Hi everyone, my name is Iris Kohler, I use she, her, hers pronouns, and welcome to CSC 231. Uh, please excuse the state of my hair, neither of us are ready for your spring break to be over, but one of us is in more denial than the other. So, anyway, I want to um, use this video as an opportunity to introduce you all to what this class is going to be about, talk about the structure of this class with regards to everything crazy going on in the world, and try to explain how we're going to use Canvas to link up all of our instruction material. So hopefully this video is useful for you all. Um, please, of course, let me know as soon as possible if you have any questions or concerns so I can try to get that sorted out before we have our first day of class. So first I want to talk about the way this class is going to be structured. I'm basically going to be doing all of my lectures through video. So you'll have something like what you just saw on Canvas where you'll click on a link, you have a quiz, and you have a video. So what I want you all to do is watch the video first, and then you'll take a quiz just basically answering some pretty simple but concept checking questions on the quiz that comes after. And I want to show you all that this is actually credit, no credit. So as long as you take the quiz, you don't have to worry about getting your answers right. I just want to make sure that I can see how people are doing in the class, whether there's certain things that need to be clarified or not. So the quizzes really aren't that big of a deal. It's mostly just a free 9% of the class, but I'll get to grading in a little bit. So we will still be meeting during our usual class time. I'll actually be using that as a sort of open lab time, so I can answer any questions that any of you have. I can look at your work and see how people are doing, and I can clarify any questions that people have as at sort of the beginning of class or if I notice that a lot of people are getting some concepts wrong on some of those participation quizzes, I can talk about those at the beginning of class. But really what it's going to be is two hours a day, uh, two days a week. We're going to all sit together. We're going to do lab work together and I can basically check up on how everyone is doing. So it will be pretty, uh, pretty low stress, hopefully. So about this class, this class is really trying to accomplish two things. The first is that it's trying to teach you all how to program. Now, programming is an incredibly useful skill. It actually has been shown to improve people's chances of getting hired if they have some sort of programming experience on their resume, even if it's just taking a class like this. Not only that, but programming is really helpful for solving really complicated problems, especially ones that it might be harder for a human to work on by itself. So back in elementary and high school, I would imagine that many of you, like me, were forced to do all of your algebra, geometry, calculus work by hand because you won't always have a calculator next to you. And obviously that's wrong because every phone has a calculator. But if you're like me and you remember the day where you suddenly got to use one of these bad boys on some of your tests and homeworks and stuff, it was like, oh my gosh, this is incredible. Look how many things this thing can graph. How could this thing graph? And that was pretty incredible, right? But the problem is, is that it's not a one-size-fits-all kind of calculator. You know, even if you have something like a TI-89, you can still do a lot of calculations really fast, and it really takes a lot of the complexity out of solving calculus. But at the same time, it doesn't, it's, it's not completely a perfect solution, because you still have to remember all of your equations, you still have to do all the work uh, calculating everything based on your certain inputs and stuff like that. And you might have to repeat those calculations over and over and over again. Say if you're on some kind of calculus test and you, it's all about taking integrals, you have to do all the same steps to take the integrals of a whole bunch of different equations over and over and over again. So the reason why I bring up sort of have this throwback to um, going from not being able to use a calculator at all to being able to have a calculator with you wherever is that I really believe that programming, learning how to program is sort of like taking another one of those steps because you're going to go from having to do all the work plugging in the equations by yourself to all of a sudden being able to type out just a few words and you're able to say calculate a whole bunch of integrals for all kinds of different expressions or being able to apply the same equation with all sorts of different inputs and so on and so on. So it really 
helps a lot when you're working on really complicated problems. It takes a lot of the complexity out of it and allows you to really just think about the higher level stuff and worry about crunching the numbers only in the sense that you have to tell the computer how to crunch the numbers. The second purpose of this class is to teach you all MATLAB, which is a incredibly relevant and helpful programming language for a lot of engineering fields. Now, MATLAB is used really commonly in industry, so having MATLAB knowledge is going to be really helpful when you're looking for jobs later on. It also is super helpful for performing a lot of calculations that a lot of engineering professions want you to do. The entire programming language is all about matrix programming, so you get to learn how to do all sorts of really nifty applications just with MATLAB. So I really do think that this class is going to be extremely helpful for all of you. Definitely learning how to program has been extremely beneficial to me personally, and I really hope that you all take, get something out of this class. So a little bit about me. I'm a graduate student in the computer science major. I have spent a lot of time teaching people how to code. I also teach a very mathy sort of course in the computer science department, working with a logic and functions and all kinds of really cool things. My goal is to be a teacher, so I've been trying to get a lot of teaching experience, which is how I ended up in this class. Of course, being a student does have a few of its downsides. Uh, I am currently taking 12 units of class as a grad student, as well as teaching this class and one more class, so eight units of class in total. So definitely this quarter will be very busy with me, for me. So definitely this quarter will be very busy for me on top of all the stuff that's going on with all sorts of not fun stuff in the world. So I definitely will try my best to be there for you as much as possible. Teaching is absolutely one of my highest priorities and I want to make sure that you all can really get useful information out of this class. So I'm here for you. Please let me know if I can help out in any way or if I, there's any questions I can answer whatsoever, all that kind of stuff. I just really want to make sure that with all the weird situations going on right now that everyone is able to learn as effectively as possible. So please do not be afraid to reach out to me to help me help you learn. There's a few things I want to go over on the syllabus, but the first is that I want to talk about the textbook. So we will be using this textbook. Uh, my lectures will actually follow along with the textbook, but I won't have time to cover every single detail. I'll instead be trying to explain things that I think are could really be better taught by you know me speaking to you all rather than the you just reading the textbook. So. There will be additional information in the textbook that I won't necessarily be covering in lecture. Uh, so unfortunately, yes, there is a mandatory textbook. Uh, you do need the sixth edition here, and you need to make sure that you don't get the international version. So I have to say that as an educator, I unfortunately am not able to advocate for you, you all looking for a free version of the textbook nor can I make any comment about how easy that may be to find. Uh, I also cannot advocate uh, someone posting anything about any information about the textbook in our discussion forums. And I will have to say that I will have to take any posts that people make sharing any uh, free copies of the textbook, but it might take me a little bit to get around to taking that down from our discussion board. So just putting all of that out there. So I did talk about the class structure a little bit, how lecture material will be given through voice and class time will be spent as sort of a open lab. I did want to point out that classes will be recorded and if there's any sort of discussion about, you know, things that clarify certain topics, I may post those to PolyLearn or I guess in this case, I may post it to Canvas. I will fix that by the time this video is up. As for the grade policy, I do have this 9% participation credit, and really all that's going to be is just taking the sort of credit, no credit quizzes associated with the video. So that's a basically a free 9% of your grade that you can get just by paying attention to the videos and answering a few questions about it. There are three midterms in the entire class. Technically, there's no final, but really these midterms are going to be cumulative because the skills that you build, say, before midterm one will be required so that you can do well in midterm two, and the skills that you build 
in mid before midterms one and two will be relevant for midterm three as well. Midterm three will actually be taking place during finals week. And midterm one will be about week three. Midterm two will be about week six. I have everything ready to go in the schedule up on Canvas right now. And then finally, th for the labs, there are 11 lab assignments. Uh, any lab assignment assigned before, say, midterm one will be due at midnight before the day before midterm one is scheduled. Uh, any labs assigned between midterm one and midterm two will be due at midnight the day before midterm two is scheduled. And any labs uh, scheduled, uh, any labs given out before midterm three will be due before midterm three is due. So really there are three major deadlines for labs. Uh, basically what I'll be doing is I will be evaluating your turned in lab material for correctness. And every lab will have directions on how to submit everything, but I do highly recommend that you follow those directions just because it will be super helpful if you want to actually get a good grade to name your files and variable names the right thing. I will be using an automatic checker to make sure that all of your output looks good. So please make sure that you follow the lab instructions to the T. And then as I note below the grade policy uh, percentages and all that, uh, grades will in fact be curved as needed. Basically the scores that you get that you end up seeing in your gradebook on Canvas will sort of be a baseline for what you can expect to be in the class. As in, you will either get that grade or slightly better once the curve is applied to all final grades. I also want to talk about the effort bonus that showed up in my, in my grade policy. Basically that's just going to be along the lines of if you post a lot in our discussion boards, which by the way, those discussion boards are through Piazza, there's a link on the main Canvas page. But if you post a lot in there, either asking questions or helping people out, or if you show up in office hours and I, I see your face a lot, or if you ask questions in class, all that kind of stuff. Basically, I want to reward people for paying attention in class and really showing me that they're trying to that they're trying to learn and trying to better themselves. So that's what this uh, effort grade is. It's up to 5% extra credit in the class. So definitely please participate in the class in any way you are comfortable. A few more notes here. If you if you have or think you may have a disability which may affect your performance in the classroom, please contact the DRC as soon as possible if you haven't and please let me know as soon as possible so I can work to accommodate you. Definitely letting me know sooner than later will be really helpful because our midterm will be in just a few weeks. So let me know as soon as you can and I can get working on it. Finally, for this academic integrity part, uh, don't cheat, basically. Uh, for lab assignments, I don't want you working together. All of your lab work should be your own. And this is really to ensure that you actually can do the most learning possible from your work. I've seen this happen a lot where when students work together, often people are left behind and sometimes they don't grasp concepts where really if they had worked themselves, worked by themselves and struggled through working on their problems until they finally gain an understanding of what's going on, that's a much better way of learning. So I do want you all to actually only work on your code yourselves so you can't collaborate in any way on any files whatsoever. Now you are allowed to say, talk over the problem with some of your fellow students, just to make sure that you understand what's going on. As soon as you understand the problem, that's when you start writing code and that's when you stop talking to other students about what's going on. If I find out that people are cheating, I will be giving a grade of F for that assignment. And honestly, it is really easy to find out when people are cheating. Uh, people's programming styles tend to be like handwriting in a sense that it's very unique between two people. So I can tell very easily if your code suddenly stops looking like your code. And if that wasn't enough, we also have some systems in place to further check all of your code against not only all of your other classmates, but all of the other submissions in the history of this class being at taught at Cal Poly. So don't cheat, you will get caught. This includes looking at code online. You're not allowed to use code that you found online. What you should be doing if you're stuck is going on our discussion board, going on Piazza, 
or asking me directly through email or in office hours. Now, something I want to point out is that if you're having trouble with code, you're not sure what's going on, and you need someone to look over your code, what you should do on Piazza is you should so you should you can paste that code that's causing you trouble, but you should make it so that only instructors can see your code. That way you're not going to expose any other students to your code and possibly get in trouble for cheating. So it's one last thing I want to talk about, and that is the schedule. It's going to be really important to figure out what lectures you need to watch, what chapters you need to read, and all that sort of stuff. So for the textbook and for the lecture, what you will have noticed that I've done is I have assigned all of this lecture material to the day April 7th. What I want you to do is I want you to watch all of this stuff before our class on April 7th. So normally all of the quizzes associated with the lecture material, those will have a deadline of April 7th, 10 minutes before our class is scheduled to start. The same with the textbook. So for chapter one, I want you to have read chapter one in our textbook by April 9th. So now for the first week or so, I'm going to be a little bit lenient with participation quiz due dates. I'm actually going to make all of the quizzes in week one due in week two. And this is just to get everyone on the wait list caught up and make sure that people are getting into the flow of the class. And after that, starting on as at least as as of the time of this video, my plans are to start enforcing this more strictly on April 14th. So starting at April 14th, all of the lecture material will be due at, on the day of their associated class, 10 minutes before a class is supposed to start. You can also notice the midterm schedule here and the lab schedule here. Uh, I also want to apologize that the schedule isn't fully fleshed out yet. I am still working through getting everything together. So hopefully by the time we start class, things will be a little bit more ready to go. All right, and that's it. Thank you all so much for watching this video and for being in the class. Uh, I hope all of you are well and staying healthy. Please let me know again if you have any concerns whatsoever, and I will try to do my best to address everything before the first day of class. All right, well, see you all on the first day, and have a nice day.